Hello and welcome to the new series of Trishti IAS. I am Pooja. Today we are going to talk about the business lending model with respect to buy now pay later. I think everybody has used this at some point of time, but do you even know how it works? As in, what is this model? Is it regulated by the RBI or not? Everything will be talked about over here. The advantages as well as the disadvantages. So, from the perspective of economics. GS mains paper 3 it is important and from the perspective of prelims examination so apple is set to enter the market of buy now pay later we all know that lazy pay and symbol many other companies are there which work on this model when they are lending for a short period of time and if the amount is not a lot it's a small amount so what is this model first of all let us understand that it is a type of short term financing for a short period of time and the amount is also not a lot it allows consumers to make purchases but pay for them at a future date so it is generally a point of sale installment loan that means you do not have to get the loan first and then purchase something but you can purchase it and pay after a certain point of time that means during the purchase only during the point of sale only you have gotten the loan okay and these are generally interest free so they are very attractive in nature with respect to that how to do that you have to download the app of a certain company which is giving you loans for buy now pay later then after downloading the app you have to link the bank account or your debit or credit card then sign up to pay in weekly or monthly installments that is up to you when you make the purchase most are approved in minutes and scheduled payments are then automatically deducted you can also pay them beforehand and if you do late in paying uh, the amount at the scheduled time they could also charge you the fee late fee all right moving ahead there are certain very important players with respect to this model zest money is there lazy pay is there simple amazon pay later is also there ola money is there paytm postpaid flex money e pay later and capital float and now apple is also going to come but you have to know the eligibility of yourself as well it is not available to person who do not have proper kyc so you must be a resident of india you must be aged above 18 years in most of the cases sometimes there is a cap sometimes there is a cap of 55 years and you must be a salaried individual also sometimes civil score is also undertaken into consideration you must have a bank account and all the kyc documents in place so these are the many requirements for eligibility so what happens let's talk about the scenario in india now india the central bank of india is statutorily uh you can say the authority which regulates the market when it comes to credit culture the central bank has been monitoring digital lenders as such because there was a proliferation during the pandemic and more than 650 suggestions and complaints came into the picture when central the central bank was asking for suggestions in which it was said that many uh, people many digital companies were lending it it was not on the basis of proper bank norms sometimes kyc irregularities were there disbursements of loans were then without consent without the consent of the individuals forcibly it was given to them so that is also a problem sudden drop in credit scores occur when a person is not ready to take the loans or does not have fiscal discipline and overspends their credit score gets obstructed then the rbi committee came into being and it said there are 1100 illegal digital loan providers across the country so it was taken into cognizance then as of now there are around 22 to 25 million buy now pay later users in india earlier this year the governor of rbi shaktikant das he said that big techs play in finance poses systemic concern for over leverage that means if you are going to provide easy loans like this the fiscal discipline of people might get distorted and then over leveraging that means giving more than enough will lead to systemic challenges in the economy right moving ahead let us talk about the steps that the rbi has undertaken to kind of pacify the issue the rbi of india released a regulatory framework for digital lending and this was done on august 10 2022 an implementation of the plan was on the recommendation of the working group of digital lending which was constituted in the year 2021 all right moving ahead the universe of digital lenders according to this working group was divided into three groups entities regulated by the rbi and permitted to carry out lending business okay then second one is entities authorized by 
authorized to carry out lending activities as per their statutory or regulatory provision, but they are not regulated by the RBI. Then we have the third one, entities lending outside the purview of any statutory or regulatory oversight. So these three were the entities. They came up with certain provisions in which it was said that consumer protection and conduct issues we have to see. For that, it was said all loan disbursements and repayments are required to be executed only between the bank account of the borrower and the regulated entity. That means which are being regulated by the RBI. So that in any case of default, at least the RBI knows what is the volume of default. No creation of any pass-through pool account should be there of the lender service provider and any other third party. That means if you have to disburse the loans or if you have to give loans, you will have to do it between the borrower account and the regulated entity account. But you cannot have any other pool which is out of the purview of RBI and you put the money over here. Okay, so that's not going to be. Any fees or charges etc which is payable to the lending service provider in the credit intermediation process shall be paid directly by the regulated entity and not by the borrower. This was also one of the very important things that recommendation was there. A standardized key fact sheet should be presented to the borrower before executing the loan contract so that the, provide, the person who is taking the loan at least is aware of the important intricacies of the entire matter. Not having an informed opinion when, you, when it comes to having to accrue loan, having to acquire loan, that is a big problem. Automatic increase in credit limit without explicit consent of the borrower is prohibited. You cannot say, the lending service providers cannot say, okay, you performed very well when it comes to taking 500 rupees, now I am giving you 5000 rupees of limit. Now what happens, this, this disturbs the entire fiscal discipline and people tend to overspend. That creates a huge hole in the systemic uh, systemic working of the economy. A cooling off or look up period, a look up period should be there during which the borrowers can exit digital loans. If a person wants to exit the digital loan, of course after paying the interest or whatever the principal amount, they can do so easily. It can be done by paying the principal and the proportionate annual percentage rate. So annual percentage rate, if it is charged, that will be paid, then principal will be paid and then only the person can exit the digital market. And without any penalty shall be provided as a part of the loan contract. Now that is not going to invite any sort of penalty. This should also be mentioned in the contract. Have a suitable nodal grievance redressal. If there is any grievance, then the fintech company needs to have a proper grievance redressal system and an officer should be there to deal with the fintech digital lending related complaints and if it is not solved, then RBI can come into the picture. That is also there. Moving ahead, there are also technology and data regulations or requirements. Data which is collected should not be a mandatory one. It should be based on need. That means whenever there is a need of collecting the data, it should be there. They should have clear audit trials as well. Auditing of the data should also be done. Should be done only with prior explicit consent of the borrower. It cannot be done without the consent of the borrower who is taking the loan. He or she should have the information that auditing will be done and it should be done on the consent with the consent of the borrower. Option may be provided for borrowers to accept or deny consent for use of specific data. That means right to privacy is over here. A borrower does not want their information to be processed. They can ask for not to happen, not that to happen. Including option to revoke previously granted consent if the borrower has previously said okay you can do so but now he or she does not want to go ahead with that plan it can be revoked as well so here also the RBI comes into the picture with respect to protecting you option to delete the data should also be there by the borrowers right to be forgotten which is an integral part of the important right to privacy right so many rights are over here moving ahead regulatory framework let's see any lending sourced through DLAs is required to be reported to the credit information company. So whatever import loans are being given, they should be given, uh, they should be informed about to the credit information companies. And all new digital lending products extended over merchant platforms, these are included. It also involves short term credit and deferred payments as well. These all are required to be informed to the credit information company 
by the regulated entities okay remember this moving ahead let's talk about the advantages of bnpl buy now pay later model first of all it increases the affordability for those people specifically who are not eligible to get credit cards or loans increase instant credit to access do not have to wait for a long period of time to get credit in terms of loan or credit card but you can do it instantly it's safe and secure of course when it's digital in nature records are maintained by your bank can choose repayment tenure it's flexible in nature and sometimes there is no cost tmi as well also it's a simple process can be understood easily not going through the lot of paperwork that loans and credit cards have there are also some certain disadvantages they may encourage impulse spending if you know that you have this amount of credit limit human wants are you know it's infinite so sometimes it can happen you can lose your ability of being phys- uh, financially disciplined sometimes it happens you are not able to repay it but what happens after that your credit score gets disturbed and even late payment fees is also there then it will when your credit score is disturbed you won't be able to get loans easily so that is also a problem minimal credit checks because what happens whenever you go to the bank they will check so much so many things of you in order to understand if you are able to repay the loan or not but here it does not happen so right so there are no credit checks that can lead to a lot of bad debts bad debts are hurting the economy we all know that so moving ahead let us talk about the question for today you have to answer this the advantages of buy now pay later business model are minimal credit checks instant access to credit increases affordability can choose repayment tenure so you have to answer this correctly for those who are going to answer it i am going to take your names in the next segment let me take the names of those who have answered my last question so it was with respect to the introduction of cheetahs again akash has answered it correctly so meshwara third was the correct answer abhay archana dharmpreet vishal shashank deli hunt karu chola vinay harshit koyal vikash harsh then rahul shrishti umesh aishu sarvi manju nikita then jalaj jalajakshi mogher basavraj then we have arshad anuj tushita anasuya abhinami then sthi pragya then we have um raghav juhi anshika kesar art experts faizu then we have ayush abhishek kartik pallavi himanshu is also there thank you himanshu naman no naman has not answered but i greet you as well sudarshan guru prasad then we have deepa rupal shabri also shubh then namr narmatha then we have himani and simran also then we have madhusudan aditya and vaibhav and neha thank you so much for answering the last question answer this as well thank you so much guys stay updated and thank you so much for watching again